everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. It really is. Today we're all about our canine companions. You know, sometimes I think we forget that dogs experience the world so differently than we do. We're talking about how to better understand them, care for them, and maybe even get them ready for the big leagues. Yep, dog shows. This book really dives into their instincts and helps us see things from their point of view. Our source material is this really cool ebook for the love of dogs, and it is packed with useful stuff which is so important, right? It's all about understanding the triggers behind the behavior, often rooted in environment or social cues. Because how can we expect to truly connect with our dogs if we don't get where they're coming from? It is. And while every dog and every situation is unique, there are some common reasons why a dog might resort to biting. And speaking of understanding those canine instincts, let's talk about a behavior that can be a little unnerving biting. One that often surprises people is excitement during play. The book mentions there are about 5 million reported dog bites every year in the U.S. alone. That's a lot of bites, really. That's definitely part of it. I always thought dogs mainly use their mouths for play because, well, they don't have hands to throw a frisbee. But remember, dogs use their mouths to explore the world, to interact with objects and each other. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. When they get caught up in the excitement of play, those playful nips can sometimes escalate especially if we miss their early warning signals. So excitement during play is one thing to watch out for. What else should we be aware of? Protection is a big one. Okay, so it's not necessarily aggression, but rather their way of looking out for their loved ones. Dogs are incredibly loyal and have a strong instinct to protect their pack, and to them, their pack includes their human family. It's like they're saying, hey, back off, this is mine. This means they might react defensively if they feel like their people, their toys, or even their food are being threatened. Precisely. They're just following their instincts. And this ties into another common trigger for biting pain or discomfort. Makes sense. Just like us, dogs can get grumpy if they're not feeling well. If I had a toothache and someone kept trying to pet my face, I might give them a little nip too. Exactly. If a dog is experiencing pain, even something as simple as petting could be misconstrued as a threat leading them to react defensively. Right, because a frightened dog can be unpredictable. And we can't forget about fear. But what are some things that might trigger fear in a dog that we might not even think twice about? Loud noises are a big one, especially sudden, unexpected ones. Oh, yeah. I think fireworks, thunderstorms, or even just a loud truck rumbling by. My dog hates thunderstorms. He starts shaking like a leaf. Poor guy. And it's not just sounds. Sudden movements can also be frightening for dogs. A stranger approaching too quickly or a child running towards them could trigger a fear response. Basically, anything that disrupts their sense of security can be a potential trigger. So we're learning to read those subtle cues and understand the why behind those barks and bites. Absolutely. But how about keeping our furry friends healthy on the inside? Diet plays a big role, right? Absolutely. And one thing this book really emphasized is the importance of a balanced diet for dogs. Yeah. There's this misconception that they're pure carnivores and only need meat. Yeah, I've totally heard that. Just picture a dog with a big steak. It's like a classic cartoon image. Right. But in reality, dogs benefit from a mix of protein and carbohydrates. Okay. Just like us. So what's the magic ratio? What should we be aiming for? The book recommends aiming for about a 50-50 split between protein and carbohydrates. Ah. This helps ensure they're getting all the nutrients they need for energy, muscle growth, and a shiny coat. Okay, so it's all about finding that balance. Yeah. And I'm assuming high-quality dog food is formulated with this in mind. Exactly. But it's always a good idea to check those ingredient lists. Right. Look for foods where meat is listed as the first ingredient and avoid anything with a lot of artificial additives or fillers. Good to know. Now, on the flip side, are there any human foods that we should absolutely avoid giving our dogs? Oh, definitely. Okay. And one that often surprises people is chocolate. Wait, really? Yeah. But dogs love anything sweet. I know. What makes chocolate so bad for them? It's actually a compound called theobromine that's found in chocolate. Okay. Dogs metabolize theobromine much more slowly than humans. Ah. Uh -huh. So it can build up in their system and become toxic, Ooh, potentially yeah. causing heart problems, seizures, or even death. Wow, that's scary. I had no idea it was that serious. Yeah. So chocolate is out. Definitely. What other sneaky dangers should we be aware of? Cooked bones are another big one. While raw bones can be great for chewing and dental health, cooked bones can splinter easily, which can lead to choking or internal injuries. Yikes. So no leftovers from the rib roast for Fido. Definitely not. 
And here's another one that might surprise you, raw fish. Really? While we might enjoy some sushi, certain types of raw fish can actually lead to a thiamine deficiency in dogs. Thiamine deficiency? Yes. What are the signs of that? Well, thiamine is essential for a healthy nervous system. Okay. So a deficiency can cause a whole host of neurological problems like loss of coordination, seizures, and even coma in severe cases. Oh, wow. That's terrifying. So many things to be aware of. Speaking of keeping them healthy, what about grooming? Ah, grooming. It's not just about keeping them looking and smelling nice. Right. Though that's a bonus. Yeah. It's an essential part of their overall health and well-being. Okay, so spill the tea, or should I say the dog shampoo. Sure. What are the essential grooming tips every dog owner should know? Well, ear care is huge. Those floppy ears might be adorable, but they can also trap moisture and debris creating a breeding ground for bacteria and yeast. So regular ear cleaning is a must. What about baths? Here. How often should we be giving our pups a scrub? Once a week is a good rule of thumb for most dogs. Okay. But it can depend on their breed and lifestyle. Right. And remember to use a shampoo specifically designed for dogs as their skin has a different pH balance than ours. Makes sense. Now I'll admit brushing is the one I'm guilty of slacking on sometimes. Sure. How important is it really? <laughs> it's more crucial than you might think. Regular brushing helps remove loose fur, which not only keeps their coat looking its best, but also helps prevent those dreaded hairballs. True. Nobody wants to deal with those. Right. And of course, regular vet checkups are given, right? Absolutely. Just like us, dogs need those regular checkups and vaccinations to prevent diseases and catch any potential problems early on. Couldn't agree more. Now, for those listeners out there who are ready to take their dog love to the next level, let's talk dog shows. <laughs> The world of dog shows. It's a whole other ballgame. But for the love of dogs, breaks it down into some surprisingly manageable steps. Perfect. Because I think for a lot of people, the idea of dog shows can seem a little intimidating. Where do you even begin? Well, the first thing is getting familiar with the field. It's like studying for a test before you actually take it. So it's all about knowing the basics of dog shows, how they're organized, right. what the different classes are, and what judges are looking for. Exactly. It's also a great idea to actually attend the show as a spectator. That way you can see how things work firsthand. Right. Hear the lingo and get a sense of the atmosphere. Right, like a dog show field trip. Exactly. So we've got a basic understanding of the show world. Now what about our furry contestant? This is the most important part, knowing your dog. Okay. It's not just about obedience. It's about truly understanding their unique personality, right. their strengths, their quirks, and even their limitations. You're basically saying that we need to know our dog's dog show resume. Right? <laughs> their special skills and talents. Precisely. That's what judges will be looking for. Right. And the more you understand your dog, the better you can showcase their best qualities. And that leads us to the next crucial step. Training. Mm -hmm. Training. 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 You've heard that phrase before. Maybe. We've gone over basic obedience before, but what kind of training do you mean? Dog show training is a bit different. You're teaching them to gate properly, oh. to stand for examination, and to remain calm and collected in a sometimes chaotic show ring environment. Okay, so it's about showing off their skills, but also their composure and temperament. Exactly. And if you're new to this, Bringing in a professional handler can be incredibly helpful. Right. They know the ropes, they can teach your dog the proper techniques, and they can also help you and your dog build a strong bond. Right. Which is essential for teamwork in the show ring. That's a great point. I can see how that bond is so important. Now, we've done our research, we understand yeah. our dog. Right. We've got the training under our belt. What's next? A vet visit. This is crucial before your dog can strut their stuff on the show floor. Right. You need to ensure that they are up to date on all their vaccinations mm -hmm. and that they're healthy and free of any health conditions that could affect their performance or their well-being. You're right. It's not just about winning the show. Right. It's about keeping our furry friends safe and comfortable. Exactly. It's all about prioritizing their health and well-being above all else. And finally, one more tip. I imagine this applies to a lot of things in life. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay. Whether you're talking to your veterinarian, a professional handler, or even a seasoned dog show competitor, don't hesitate to ask for advice or guidance. It's like the old saying goes, there's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to our beloved dogs. Exactly. And remember, everyone starts somewhere. Right. We all have to learn the ropes, and asking for help is just another part of the journey. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. 
from understanding those quirky dog behaviors to keeping them in tip-top shape and even learning how to take our canine buddies to the dog show circuit. I feel like I've learned a whole new language. It is a whole new world, isn't it? It is. But that's the beauty of learning. Yeah. It opens up a whole new world of understanding, appreciation, and connection with these amazing creatures that we share our lives with. So true. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I have a little something for you to ponder. Okay. We've talked about understanding dogs. Yes. Learning their language, right. seeing the world through their eyes. Absolutely. But what if we could take that a step further? That's a great point to ponder. What if we could peek behind the curtain of their thoughts? Understand their dreams, right. their fears, yeah. their perspectives on life. It's a question I think we all ask sometimes. What if we could truly know what our furry friends are thinking and feeling? Here's a thought-provoking question for you to chew on, dear listener. If you could ask your dog one question, just one, about their experience of the world, Ooh. what would it be? Ooh, what a question. It really makes you think, doesn't it? What would they tell us about their joys, their fears, right. their unique perspective on this crazy thing we call life? It does make you think, doesn't it? It does. And perhaps by paying closer attention to their behavior, their quirks, right. their unspoken language, mm -hmm. we might just begin to get a glimpse into their world. I love that thought. It's like cracking a secret code, unlocking the mysteries hidden within those wagging tails and soulful eyes. Exactly. Well, dear listeners, we'll leave you with that thought-provoking question. We'd love to hear your answers. What would you ask your dog? Share your thoughts, your insights, your burning canine queries with us on social media. Until next time, keep those tails wagging and those ears perked for more deep dives into the fascinating world around us.